In our previous video, we discussed Cisco's recommendation that we mark traffic as close to the source as possible. That way, the next router or the next switch can very quickly and very efficiently look at that marking and make a decision based on that marking. And in this video, we're going to consider some of those different markings. We're going to consider marking at layer 2 and marking at layer 3. First up, let's consider marking at layer 2. And we do that with a COS, a class of service marking. Inside a .1Q frame, traveling over a .1Q trunk, we have four bytes that get added to all the non-native VLANs. And within those four tag bytes, we have three bits called the priority bits. And those bits are used to assign a class of service value for this frame. And with three bits at our disposal, we have eight possible values. After all, two raised to the power of three is eight. That means we have COS values in the range of 0 through 7. However, Cisco says do not use 6 or 7. Those are reserved for network use. So we're limited to only using values of 0 through 5 for production traffic. And since a 5 is the highest we can use for production traffic, that's what our voice frames should be marked with. In fact, Cisco IP phones by default will mark voice frames with a class of service value of a 5. Now, I said this is going to be done over a .1Q trunk. What if we want to mark traffic coming from a PC, for example, and it's not connected via a trunk? Well, we can actually have this type of marking on a non-trunk connection using 802.1p. In order for that to work, though, our network interface card in our machine and the switch need to be configured for .1p support. Because with .1p, we're creating a frame that looks an awful lot like a .1Q frame. We're adding on four bytes, and we're using three of those bits in those four bytes for priority marking. What is the difference? It's the VLAN field. If we're using .1P, we're not actually populating the VLAN field. That's all zeros. That's the difference between a .1Q frame and a .1P frame. However, even if we mark our traffic perfectly at layer 2 with a COS marking, a COS marking is not going to pass a router boundary. Much like a MAC address is a layer 2 address, what happens when a MAC address reaches a router and we're forwarding that traffic out another router interface? That MAC address gets rewritten. Same thing with our class of service. It's going to be rewritten to a zero. So we probably want to convert our COS value to some sort of a layer 3 marking before we go through a router boundary. The good news is, a lot of our Cisco Catalyst switches, they've got the ability to do that conversion from a COS value to a Layer 3 value. And when it comes to Layer 3 values, we've got a couple of main types we're going to be paying attention to. Those are IP precedence and DSCP. First of all, let's consider where these markings reside in a packet. In a Layer 4 packet, the header has a byte called the TOS byte, TOS, for type of service. We have something similar in an IP version 6 header. It's called a traffic class byte, but regardless, it's doing the same thing. We've got these 8 bits that can be used to indicate the priority of a packet. An earlier type of layer 3 marking used the three leftmost bits in this toss byte to give us an IP precedence value. This sounds a lot like class of service, doesn't it? We've got three bits, meaning that our range of values is 0 through 7. Again, Cisco says do not use 6 or 7. Those are reserved for network use implying our voice should probably be marked with an IP precedence of 5. However, this only leaves us with 6 markings that we can use. That might not be granular enough for us. You see, Cisco says that we should create, at a maximum, 11 different classes of traffic. If we create more than that, we have to remember that if everyone is special, then nobody is special. So we don't want to be too granular, but we don't want to be too generic either. But in many cases, we will want more than just six different classifications. To give us more than six classifications, we can use DSCP. That stands for Differentiated Services Code Point. And here, we're using the six leftmost bits in the toss byte. And 2 raised to the power of 6 is 64, meaning our range of values is 0 through 63. Now we've got 64 values to pick from. In fact, that might be an issue. That's almost too many to pick from. We need some relative level of priority. As an example, let's say on my router, I mark my best traffic with a DSCP value of 26, and I send it to your network. And uh, your network, you think a value of 33 is the best. And you look at a 26 and you say, on my network, that's dirt. That's low priority on my network. You see the problem? 
you and I have not agreed on a relative level of priority for our markings. The great news is the IETF standards body, they have gone into these 64 values and they have pre-selected 21 values that you and I can both use and we can maintain a relative level of priority. These 21 values are sometimes called PHBs for per hop behaviors. A PHB is the name that we give to one of these 21 values. In fact, let's take a look at each of those 21 different DSCP values. We're going to be going through a table where we look at the name or the PHB, the decimal value, and the binary value for each of these 21 different PHBs. One PHB is simply named default. And we can mark traffic with a default value if we don't have a particularly strong opinion about it. We don't want to punish it. We don't want to reward it. It's just default traffic. That has the name or the PHB of default. The decimal value is zero. And if we look at those six leftmost bits of our toss byte, they're all zeros. Now, at the other end of the spectrum, we have expedited forwarding or EF. That has a decimal value of a 46. And in binary, if we look at those six leftmost bits of the toss byte, a 46 would be a 101110. But what if I marked traffic with a value of 46 because my router was using DSCP and I sent it to your router, but your router is looking for IP precedence markings? Are those going to be incompatible? Not exactly. Check this out. Your router is going to be interrogating the three leftmost bits of this toss byte. Your router is going to be looking at 101. If we look at those three bits in isolation and convert that to decimal, what is that? One zero one, that's a four plus a one, that's a five. That's how we should be marking voice traffic with IP precedence. And if we're using DSCP, we should mark voice traffic with a 46 or an EF. So you see, we are maintaining some relative level of priority because my voice marking in the DSCP world equates to your voice marking in the IP precedence world. However, if we want pure backwards compatibility, we can use a class selector value. There are seven of these. Class selector 1 all the way through class selector 7. And what I mean by pure backwards compatibility is, if we were to look at an IP precedence marking, we would only be using the three leftmost bits in that toss byte. All the other bits would be zero. So if I took a DSCP value and only used the three leftmost bits and left the other bits as zeros, that would look identical to an IP precedence marking. So you see, if I use class selector 1, that's going to have a decimal value of 8 if I'm looking at those 6 leftmost bits because we have a 1 in the 8 column. But if we're looking at this from an IP precedence perspective, we're only looking at the 3 leftmost bits. What is 001 in decimal? It's a 1. So you see, class selector 1 is going to be interpreted as having an IP precedence of 1. In fact, Bit for bit, this is identical to what we would see in the six leftmost bits of an IP precedence marking. And the same thing continues on for CS2 through CS7. Class selector 2 would have a 1 in the 16 column, so it's going to have a decimal value of 16. But again, if we look at those three leftmost bits in isolation, that's a 2. Class selector 3, if we're looking at those three leftmost bits, that's an IP precedence of 3. If we look at class selector 4, same thing, 100, zero, zero, that is a 4 in decimal. Class selector 5, 101, one, that's a 4 plus a 1, that's a 5 in decimal. So class selector 6, class selector 7, same thing. We are purely backwards compatible with IP precedence, bit for bit, because bit positions 4, 5, and 6, they're all zeros. And this makes up 9 of the 21 values I was telling you about. What about the other 12? Well, the other 12 fall into a category called Assured Forwarding, or AF values. And we can best think of this as a table. And notice we've got four rows in our table with four different classes. Notice that class 1 is going to have the values of AF11, AF12, AF13. You see, class 1 has a 1 after the AF. AF11, AF12, AF13. Where does that 1 come from? Well, that 1 comes from the three leftmost bits in the toss byte. Notice that all of these values in class 1, if we look at the IP precedence equivalent, 0, 0, 1 in decimal, that's a 1. They're going to be interpreted as having an IP precedence of 1. So class 1 equals an IP precedence of 1. Same thing with classes 2, 3, and 4. 
All the values in any class are going to have the same three leftmost bits. But we have AF11, AF12, AF13. What's up with that second number? Well, that second number has to do with the drop probability. For example, let's consider the low drop probability column. Here, that second value after AF is a 1. So we have AF11, AF21, AF31, AF41. That last decimal place is a 1. Where does the 1 show up in binary? It's from bit positions 4 and 5. If you look at bit positions 4 and 5 in isolation, 0, 1, yeah, that's going to be a decimal value of a 1. And by the way, you might have noticed that for all 21 of these values that the IETF selected for us, the sixth bit position is always 0. If you ever see a DSCP value whose sixth bit position is not a 0, you are not looking at one of the uh, 21 per hop behavior values. And this is similar for the medium drop probability column. Notice that everybody has a 2 as the second digit. AF12, 22, 32, 42. The 2, that comes from bit positions 4 and 5. We got a 1, 0. That's a 2 in decimal. And that's going to give us a medium drop probability. And high drop probability, that's where we end in a 3, AF13, 23, 33, 3, 4, 3. And if you look at bit positions 4 and 5 in isolation, it's a 3. It's a 1, 1, which is a 2 plus 1, that equals a 3. But what does it mean to have a lower, medium, or high drop probability? Well, we'll need to answer that in our next video, because that drop probability has to do with a uh, feature called weighted random early detection. But let me just give you one example before we go on to that next video. Consider something marked with a value of AF43 and something else marked with a value of AF21. If we start to become congested, who gets dropped first? A lot of people will look at that and say, well, AF21 will be dropped first because it has a lower priority. Actually, the priority, in other words, the IP precedence equivalent value, has nothing to do with the drop probability. The drop probability is entirely dependent upon that second digit. So we would actually drop AF43 before we dropped AF21. Now join me in our next video as we reveal exactly why that's so.